a little while ago, I made homemade fruit ice cream. Delicious. Can you guess which flavor this is? Let's get into how I made it. We have some Taiwanese avocados and they are now ripe. As you can see, the color has changed and if I press them, they are soft enough that you can press it down and it doesn't come back a lot, so they're totally ripe. I'm giving the avocados a quick wash so that nothing on the skin will be carried into the flesh by the knife. These avocados are perfect. Look at that color. I'm putting the flesh into a bag because I'm going to freeze it. Next, I'm gonna cut up some mangoes. Now, we bought these when it was perfect mango season in Taiwan, and these mangoes were some of the most beautiful that I've ever seen. They were so delicious fresh. If you don't know how to cut up a mango, here's how I like to do it. First, I cut the sides off of the seed. Then I remove the thin strip of skin from around the seed. And then I'm going to cut all of the excess flesh off from the seed. Then I like to score the flesh in the remaining two pieces. And you can use a spoon to scoop it out. Or here I'm just using my hand. And I'm not wearing gloves this time because I washed my hands carefully and I'm just making this for myself. Again, I'm putting the mango in a bag because I'm going to put it in the freezer. Next, I have a lovely pineapple here, and this one is one of the special milk pineapples. The flesh is actually almost white, and if you've never tried cutting up your own pineapple, it's easy. All you do is you cut off the bottom and the top, you can set those aside. Then you stand the pineapple up and you're going to cut little strips of the skin off the sides. Don't cut off too much because you don't want to remove the flesh. So cut just a narrow little strip and keep turning the pineapple until you've taken off the main skin. You might be left with some of these little hard sharp bits from the skin. You can just go around and remove those with a knife. Next, I like to cut it into quarters, so I'm cutting it from top to bottom into four long pieces. And sometimes you will need to cut the core off of these four pieces, but I found that the core on this pineapple was soft enough that I didn't need to remove it. Then I cut it into chunks. All right, next I have a real treat here, some cherries. And I'm gonna prepare them by washing them first. And I'm gonna be a little bit careful washing them because we don't know if they were covered with pesticides. So we actually did seven times of washing them. First, three times with water. The fourth time I added some baking soda, as you can see here, and I'm swishing them around in the water. Then I took a little scrubby sponge to kind of scrub them. The fifth time, I added some salt, and again, I swished them around in the water. And then the sixth and seventh time, I just used water to rinse them thoroughly. Then I removed the stems, and I put them out to dry. And we have a durian. <laughs> if there was ever a fruit that made it clear it doesn't want to be eaten, I think it's this fruit. These spikes are serious. <laughs> and this one doesn't smell too bad, but they usually do have a pretty strong smell. Oof, I gotta get that out of my hands. Wow. Okay, look at that. This time I am prepared. Let's do this. I heard that you just stick a knife in. Ooh, okay, the knife goes in. And twist. Oh yeah. So it has these kinds of like 
sections, which are very interesting. And then in this section, you can see it has a seed. Yeah, quite a large seed. It's not a nice smelling fruit. It doesn't really taste anything like it, what it smells like. Mm, just tastes a little bit funny, but mostly it tastes like... Reminds me kind of like grape, actually. Grape flavor. Kind of like grape texture, too. Like mixture between grape and banana. Something it does have a little bit of that smell though, I have to say, even after I've eaten it. I can smell a little bit of it. Mm. This is 600 NT worth of fruit. It's pretty expensive. Well, actually, it is pretty easy to take apart once you've gotten inside. But I'm still not sure how it's going to taste. This is one durian. Okay, so now all of my bags of fruit are completely frozen, so I took them out and I'm gonna start making ice cream. Now we have an awesome machine here that allows us to uh, blend up things that are even completely frozen. This machine is really strong. You might need a very powerful blender to be able to do the same thing. Or if you don't have a machine like this, then you can simply thaw the fruit a little bit more and make it into something like a smoothie. It won't be the same texture as ice cream, but it will still taste delicious. So I'm just going through and blending each of the fruits. Here's the pineapple, and the pineapple turned out gorgeous. The texture was really nice. Next is some mango. Again, beautiful result. Here's the avocado. And lastly, the cherry. And we're done. Look at that, five different flavors of homemade ice cream. Whoops, I lost the sound on these last few clips. So I'm going to tell you how each of these tasted. The first question on my mind is when to eat the durian. Do I eat it first? Do I eat it last? In the end, I decided maybe I should start with it, and then if I don't like it, at least I get to try the other ones. So, here goes. The first thing I tasted was the texture, which was quite nice. It was actually pretty creamy. But the flavor, well, the first flavor I tasted wasn't too bad, and I thought it was gonna be okay. But then I started getting small tastes of onion, which is not good at all in my opinion when you add it to the other flavors. But I was glad to try it and maybe we can say, of course it tastes good. It's the taste of new Taiwan dollars, since it's a little bit expensive. Okay, next I decided to try the avocado ice cream. Now, I was excited to try this because I knew it would be very creamy. And since avocado doesn't have a lot of natural sugar in it, I added a little bit of honey to mine. As expected, very creamy. The honey didn't add a lot of flavor. In fact, this one I felt didn't have much flavor at all. I thought this might be better if I added another fruit to it. Banana is, I think, a very natural choice, or maybe some other kind. But I kind of wonder how it would look if you mixed it with another fruit. Green and another color might not look as nice. Overall, a lot of potential though. All right, next, I'm so excited to try the cherry. Now this one didn't have the same texture as the other ice creams. It ended up being more of a slushy, we can say, which means it's more liquid than the other ones. But it smelled great. I'm super excited to try this. As I expected, the flavor was awesome. Wow, it had almost a taste of cherry wine or something like that. Such a very strong, beautiful cherry flavor.
In the end, to make the texture of this one better, I think I would actually add this as an ingredient to another ice cream. Maybe just make regular milk cream ice cream and add this as a cherry flavor or cherry swirls in the ice cream. That would be perfect. All right, and now it's time for pineapple. And I think this was the most surprising one to me because I didn't think the texture would be creamy at all. Pineapples seem kind of fibery to me. You know what I mean? They have a kind of strong fiber type texture. And I was really surprised. It was one of the most creamy of all of the ice creams. You can see it on my spoon there. The texture is just like a delicious sorbet. And this one was a new favorite for me. Wow, it was so good. Very refreshing and a great balance of sweet and just a little bit sour. I had to take another spoon because it was so good. In fact, I went ahead and finished the bowl later. All right, and I saved the one that I was most confident in for last, the mango. In fact, we had already made this mango ice cream many times before, so I knew it would be a great result. If you don't know this, pure mango, put in the freezer and then blend it up, makes amazing ice cream. Of course, it's the best when you can get the mangoes at their perfect ripeness, when it's the peak of mango season. And isn't it beautiful? The color is so inviting. It just makes you want to eat it. As you can see, it has a great texture too, just like the pineapple, smooth and firm. It's so good. I'm telling you, you have to try it. Okay, well, the results are, I thought this was a great experiment. I learned a lot. My two favorites were definitely the mango and the pineapple. Those are amazing and healthy too. You don't need to add anything to it. Just freeze the fruit and then mix it with the machine and it makes perfect ice cream. We bought all of the fruits for these ice creams from a local vendor here in Dingman who sells many different kinds of fruits and other things good quality, good price. If you're interested, I put a link to the Facebook group in the video description. And again, you will probably need a very powerful blender or one of these machines that we have to make it into ice cream. If you have a normal blender, then you can make fruit smoothies, but remember, it's very hard for the machine to break it when it is really hard frozen. If you're interested in the machine that we use, I put a link to a Google Doc that you can fill out in the video description. That can get you connected with the consultant that helped us get our machine. And they can help you with the purchasing process, maybe any discounts, and also get you set up with your new machine. If you have any questions, you can leave us a comment on the video. And what about, did you learn any new English vocabulary? Let us know. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.